It all begins when I bring my perfectly working PS3 to my workshop. When I was at home, this PS3 connects to the internet without any problem. But whenever I bring it to my workshop, this strange network problem appears. When the console boots up, it does connect to the internet briefly, but the connection drops after a few seconds later. Once the connection drops, it won't connect to the internet anymore unless you restart the console. Well, let's try reconnecting our PS3 to the internet in the setup menu. Select easy, then select the wired connection. Somehow it tells us to connect an ethernet cable. If we quit the setting menu at this point, we will get this error code 8001020201. The ethernet connection doesn't work. But how about the Wi-Fi connection? Let's try it. Again, go to the network setting menu. You may notice that it takes unusually long to load the menu. It only happens when the PS3 is in the workshop. Remember this. It is an important clue and we will come back to it later. Now let's focus on the Wi-Fi connection. The scanning of Wi-Fi signal also takes very long. After this long scanning, it says that no access point was detected. Similarly, if we quit the setting menu now, we will get another error message. I know what you are saying. You are thinking that the network in my workshop is broken, but I can promise it's not. Let me prove it by trying a slim PS3 in my workshop. We will test it using the same cable, the same network, and at the same location. Don't mind the fan noise. I installed custom firmware to tune up the fan speed to test both the CPU and GPU temperature. So don't worry, nothing is overheating here. Pay attention to the ethernet cable and the LED indicator. It is very stable this time and it doesn't disconnect. Since the ethernet is working fine, let's test the Wi-Fi. Again, go to the network setting and scan the Wi-Fi networks. scanning successful. The first Wi-Fi is the Wi-Fi from my workshop, but it also picks up a bunch of unsupported signals from other offices. We have ruled out the router problem in the workshop by testing a slim PS3 on the same router. Since other devices such as laptops and mobile phones can connect to the internet without any problem, I am 100% sure that there is no problem with my router. At this point you must be thinking the Wi-Fi module on the PS3 is broken. I mentioned earlier in this video that the network functionality of the PS3 was perfectly fine at home. Only when I moved the PS3 to the office building where my workshop is located, the network functionality stopped working. Is the Wi-Fi module half broken? To check this, we can simply replace it with a working one. But this console is a CECHL model. The Wi-Fi module is integrated to the motherboard, making it unreplaceable. Trying another Wi-Fi module on a CACHL models is equivalent to trying another motherboard, since a PS3 motherboard is almost as expensive as a console. Why not just buy another console? That's right! I ended up buying nine fat consoles just to check what the problem is. To make this investigation more robust, I tried to cover as much models as I could find in my region, from the backward compatible models such as CECHA and CECHB to the later fat models, such as CECHP. I made this batch as diverse as I could, and I confirmed with each seller to make sure that the network feature works before buying. I also double-checked it in my home to make sure it really works, before taking it to the office building. Surprisingly, they all have the same problem. They all work at home, but not in my workshop inside the office building. Except one model, the CECHB. In case you don't know, this model is special in a way that it doesn't have the Wi-Fi module. Why does the absence of the Wi-Fi module make the network function work? This is so counterintuitive. Let me summarize what we've found so far. Inside a room with a bunch of Wi-Fi signals. If you have a FAT model with Wi-Fi capability, which covers basically all FAT models except the CECHB, the network function crashes. I use the term crashes because it works for a few seconds after booting up and then it stopped. When you try to reconnect it, either through an ethernet cable or Wi-Fi, you get the error message 8001201 or 8001000 respectively. CECHB is fine because it does not receive any Wi-Fi signal due to the absence of the Wi-Fi module. Based on these observations, we have the following hypothesis. 
There are Wi-Fi signals that crash PS3 FAT models, except the CECHB version. To validate this hypothesis, we simply need to find a room that has a very weak Wi-Fi signal, so weak that it is nearly non-existent. Then we test the console again in this room. If the console works in this room, that means the Wi-Fi signals are indeed crashing the PS3. Let's use this CECHA model as an example. I booted it up to verify that the network functionality is not working in my workshop. The green LED indicator for the Wi-Fi doesn't blink at all, just like the white color CECHL model that we saw earlier. If we go to the network setting menu and try to scan the Wi-Fi signals, it will return nothing, and if we quit the setting menu, we will get the same error message that we saw earlier. After that, I was walking around like an idiot trying to find the room with poor Wi-Fi signals. I tried really, really hard to recall that room so that we can verify the hypothesis. And then I got it. It is the room behind a fire door. I quickly arranged a table, a power extension, and a monitor to set up a testing area for my PS3. Additionally, I brought along a laptop and a router, enabling me to install custom firmware during the process. Same routine as before. Go to the network setting and scan the Wi-Fi signals. This time, we are able to detect four different signals. The first one is from my router. The remaining three are from other places. These signals are weak enough that they couldn't crash the fat PS3. Nevertheless, I am now able to connect my PS3 to the network. And the network connection is stable enough that the green LED indicator doesn't stop blinking anymore. Now the question becomes, what type of Wi-Fi signals crashes FAT PS3? To answer this question, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison between the signals that could be found behind the fire door and my workshop. Also, let's have a detailed look at how the Wi-Fi from my router is different from the other Wi-Fi signals. I found a few key differences. WPA2 Enterprise, 40 and 80 megahertz and 802.11 AC protocol. Are these the culprits of crashing my PS3? Probably, but why? I'm not sure. If you know the answer, feel free to leave a comment below. But one thing I am sure is that some Wi-Fi signals are crashing our favorite fat PS3. If that's the case, shielding away some Wi-Fi signals like what I did here could help. If you suddenly encounter this problem out of nowhere, and you don't have a giant shield like this, it is worth bringing your PS3 to another place with less Wi-Fi signals and try again. Hopefully it would work for you. In my country, there are office booths like this everywhere. It has power outlets and a table inside, a perfect setup to test consoles. As 5 gigahertz signals become more widespread these days, I have a feeling that more and more fat PS3 owners will face this problem sooner or later. Some people might already throw away their fat PS3 due to this issue, not knowing that it is just Wi-Fi interference and their consoles might be working completely fine. So please help sharing this video and raise the awareness. Thank you for watching and see you next time.